Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the first season review video uh, <laughs> for 21-22. Yeah, I agree with you, it is a little bit late, but due to the fact that we had national teams until recently and due to life circumstances, I only get to do uh, them now. Still, better late than never. And yes, if this was my full-time job, I probably would have already done that and prepared them sooner. So uh, what I want to do is I want to go in this video through the two Bundesligas, meaning the German Bundesliga and the Austrian Bundesliga. By the way, my background is all the title winners, domestic title winners um, in the eight leagues that I'm uh, covering. And I'm, I'm going to wear each uh, video the jersey of the team that actually won the championship in one of these leagues. Some leagues we have two, ger two uh, in there, like Germany and Austria. Decided to go uh, Bayern Munich for this one, taking the bigger league. So uh, what I want to do in this video is to um, have a look overall. What is the picture? Uh, where did everyone end up to? How will this lot into the European competitions next, next season? Who got promoted? Who got relegated? Then uh, look a little bit at some performance uh, measures for each team, uh, who are winners and losers. And then we actually do a little bit of a deep dive um, and look at each uh, season overall. I don't want to spend too much time on these graphs, but I would uh, encourage you, if you're interested in a team, I'm going to go through all the teams uh, to just uh, pause the video and just look at the graph uh, a little bit to see... Um, how things are going. Enough preamble, let's dive right in. I'm gonna start this one in Austria and you will see in on the chapter below, uh, you will also see then uh, where uh, George address us in case uh, you wanna skip forward. Here's the first season summary and let's focus on the left part. Um, we have, of course, in the Champions League, we have champions uh, Red Bull Salzburg who also won the Austrian yeah. Cup. Only one of two double winners in the top eight leagues this season, the other one being FC Porto. Sturm Graz had a pretty good season, uh, very constant overall and uh, have a deserved second spot and they will slot into the third qualification round for the Champions League. Uh, where they, you know, it's not quite secured that they, I think they're, they're getting in a European, no, they're, they're secured in a European group there because in the third qualification round you always is through. Then uh, one of the bigger surprises this season was Austria Wien, uh, who actually were, uh, prepared the fans to have a rough season. They are actually in the Europa League playoff. Huge. So they have European slots guaranteed. Um, the one thing, though, is that they were uh, had were really in financial trouble. Uh, things are looking on the up at this moment. Um, however, they will start with a four-point deficit for next season. But also pilfering Lusk because their new investor is the former vice president of Lusk, which yeah uh, galls me a little bit. But, but, but by the way, the reason why I'm doing this one first is because preparation for the new season in Austria has already started. That's uh, the way it goes. Then in the Conference League um, playoffs, we have uh, Wolfsburg and Rapid Wien, who had a really horrid season, as you already can uh, get a glance off on the right side. And then the relegated team, um, maybe ahead of the season, I would have said, yeah, I would expect Admira Wacka to get relegated. But seeing how the season went, it was a totally undeserved relegation because they were by far not the worst team. It's only down to the league format that it was Admira Wacka and not Altag who got relegated. Because Altag overall, if every game would have counted fully, Altag would have been the clear relegation candidate. Let me be absolutely sure on that. And to top it off, uh, we get a promoted team also from Vorarlberg in Austria, Lustenau. So uh, this is the first time in a long time, if ever, I think, but, but I can remember that there are two for, uh, teams from Vorarlberg in the first league, uh, which on one side is good for the region. On the other side, given that uh, the resources end and, 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 and so it probably would be better if there's only one team in Vorarlberg. Looking at the right, uh, I decided and in Austria it's really, really difficult because of this weird league format where the league gets split into two after the, reg the regular season with points slashed in half. So, um, but what I tried to do is I took the preseason expectations for points and you see the problem there because of the halving. Uh, this is not an accurate measure and I probably have to uh, look for the next season to, 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 um, uh, in, into a better one. 
and you see two numbers. The left one is the points that the team actually achieved and the right column is the points that, uh, were, uh, that were expected at the beginning of the season. So when I made my very, very first prediction. And then we take the difference with the green bar, of course, being great season, with the red bar being a bad, bad season. And yeah, uh, you see it's not a perfect measure also because Austria Klagenfurt were a promoted team from last season and they have been the best promoted team since LASK uh, came up in 2017. I think the LASK finished fifth that season or fourth even. Uh, Austria Klagenfurt finished sixth. However, because they landed in the upper playoff, they got, of course, a little bit less points, so uh, therefore it is a little bit deceiving. However, it's pretty clear that the two biggest losers of the season, and one can argue what's the biggest dis disappointment, I have my own opinion, but Rapid Vienna are 10 points less than expected, and Lusk also having 7 points less than expected, and on top of that, not being a top player when, when you started out as a clear top 4, if not top 3 candidate for that. So those are the two, two big losers, the big winners, of course, Salzburg and Sturm Graz. I would actually count Austria Wien and Austria Klagenfurt in there, there, there as well. Admira Wacker, despite getting relegated, right around there, uh, Hartberg was also much better than expected. Um, but we, I think um, another way and probably a better way to see this difference, especially in Austria, is how to how the rating has been changed. And basically, this is a rating within the league and I kind of adjusted it to be somewhere between 0 and 100. And I think here you can clearly see that Austria Salzburg, uh, Austria Salzburg, <laughs> I wish it was Austria Salzburg, Red Bull Salzburg had a tremendous season uh, with a major boost. Austria Wien also and Austria Klagenfurt for sure among the best teams. You see that Admira Wacker actually was not that bad, 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 bad team. And you clearly see here the two big losers are Rapid Wien and Lusk. I would, I would actually make an argument that Lusk is even a bigger loser because Lusk should have been in the upper playoff. From the onset of the, of the season, it was just a disastrous season. I'm saying this as a very fervent Lusk fan. So far for the official season summary, let's run through uh, the individual seasons and I go through it by the standings or from the uh, last season. And we will start here with uh, Red Bull Salzburg. On the left, you see how the rating has developed for the team over the entirety of the, uh, of the season and in relation to the other teams, which I did not uh, highlight in color. And to the right, how in Atlantic Austria hit the expected goal difference. I will not really comment on that one too much. But what you can see that except for a blip in early spring, you know, Champions League did not go well. It, it was a for Salzburg a, a, a bit of a rough start. But it has been straight up. This was one of the best seasons that Salzburg ever had, uh, I must say. And yeah, congratulations to them with their Geisle uh, doing well. ADM flame flamed out to the same, but the Salzburg train was nigh unstoppable. Um, Rapid, as I said, is the complete op opposite, starting as the clear number two and on a continuous slide, second coach Kubauer, um, uh, towards, uh, towards the winter break. Then a little resurgence, but in the end it went all uh, to, to, to nothing. It was a season, season to forget where I basically had to scrape through a playoff to qualify for Europe next, next, next season. Big rebuilding job done to be done there as well. Sturm Graz, uh, the project started out well. Uh, Sturm Graz is building a very uh, interesting and if you're a Sturm fan, probably exciting project. You see that it actually really, really started out well in spring and there was a little dip during, during the... Um, um, you know, going to the winter break, the season got a little bit long, you played Europa League, you had to deal with COVID cases, all that, that, that kind of stuff. But once the European engagement was gone, and Sturm Graz uh, was the only team in the European groups that they did not survive, but they had a really, really tough group, one has to say as, as well, with Monaco, Real Sociedad, uh, and what was the last team, uh, PSV Eindhoven. So it was expected that they will go out. But then they built up that momentum again, and only... At the very end, when it was kind of so, uh, it fell, uh, it fell. But uh, Sturm Graz, one of the positive um, result, um, teams this season. Lusk, absolute disaster season. An absolute disaster season. And it's only propped up by a decent performance in the Conference League in a group that I repeat, if Lusk doesn't win that group, Yes, Maccabi, Tel Aviv was probably uh, uh, the biggest challenge, but even they had a rough season. If you don't win this group, it was actually to be expected with the uh, opponents that in with Helsinki and uh, Alashkert. 
So, and then a good showing um, there. As we said, there were two coaching changes. Uh, the one for Talhammer uh, was coming all along. Uh, I was a little a little bit sad because I think he's a really, really good coach. And he went to Bell, Belgium and took Serke Brügge out of the relegation uh, fight. So uh, pretty uh, strong KKK case there. Unfortunately, he never had, had a lobby around here. Uh, then his co, uh, Wieland got the, the, he kind of, as you can see, this was happening October, November, kind of, sort of, steadied the ship, not really, honestly. Uh, it was still very much up and down, but it looked a little bit better. However, it all fell down as soon as the, um, he had this great win against Tirol to start the playoff, and then it all went sideways in all the bad ways. And with three matches to go, uh, Didi Kubauer from Rapid got the job and I still don't know what to think about it. A season to forget and to be honest, on a sporting level, and I speak sporting level only, there are so many players leaving. Maybe it was needed in, in, in a way, but um, there's such an upheaval and the sort of last identity that they built is kind of getting lost. I, I'm not very optimistic going into the new season, although having a, a few exciting signings along the way. Wolfsburg, uh, were kind of a sleeper team all through. Uh, started so and so, then I really got well, uh, towards the wind, wind with a break. They even finished second in the um, uh, regular season, but then kind of fell away in the playoffs but still qualifying for Europe so uh, it, it it was really a so-and-so season for them I have to have I have to say but I, I they're consistently up there and finishing fourth spot uh, for a small team like them is pretty uh, cool uh, Tirol uh, was also I mean from they were last place like last for a large part of the regular season but they got the turnaround and especially then ending the season they were unstoppable and only by Rapid in the playoffs then deservedly so, but I think the schedule all the play them there is a golf in talent. But it was a pretty, pretty uh successful season in the end. Yes, you did not uh, finish in the top six, but other than that, a uh, pretty good season. Hartberg, uh you also see there's a big jump up in the rating uh come early May. Suddenly um, they had a big result. Up until that point, they were actually in relegation trouble. But then they turned, they, they turned around in the last day of the season. They still could, 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 could relegate it, but managed to avoid this. Austria Wien, as I said, is one of the positive stories of the season. If they were in the financial trouble, that will start them with a negative four points next season. But I think that uh, what is happening with Austria Wien at the moment, I think they could become a power again because they they hired the right know-how there with Jürgen Werner. You know, a lot of Lusk moves to Vienna. Not happy about that. And it's not the first time in history like there. But overall, the season, Austria Wien was had a really rough start to the season. Uh, it was always said, ah, oh, this is going to be a rough season. And then they actually got to go and coach Manfred Schmidt has done a really, really ad 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 admirable job. And it was never really, they were finishing third uh, what come to play of, uh, yes, it was a tussle, but they look to be the most as a team, also a young team. So really, really exciting season if an Austria Wien fan. Uh, for Reed, it was the weirdest season of them all. Um, they were in contention for a top six, uh, re a regular season finish. Then they actually even started sort of well in the playoffs with beating Lusk and, and, and so on. And then it completely fell sideways. And in between, I think also two coaching changes. The first one, I did not really understand because the things were actually going well. Um, and then the, uh, at the end, you tried to kind of, uh, win it over, but, um, stability. Both up Austrian teams need stability and read almost were relegated in a season that actually was a success that even made it to the cup final. Losing to Salzburg. So, a uh, very, very odd season for them. Altach should have got, 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 got really good. Look at how the rating dropped. They had such a difference. And yes, they turned it around in, in the playoffs when it counted. And suddenly, the games count twice as much as before. And they had a big win at Admira. Um, they looked down and out. They had, I think, a four-point uh, distance. But they got the big win at uh, Admira and had it in their own hands on the last day of the season, when also Tirol uh, saved a lot of players for the playoff uh, against Lusk. So yeah, and that uh, leaves Admira Wacker. No, not, we have one more. Started out as the last place team, then really looked safe. Kind of safe, and coach Andy Herzog actually did a good job. 
they were even first in the playoff group and then boom away they went and so yeah they finished uh in last place and although i have had to say that at miravaka should have gotten rarely again many times over the last few seasons this one was not a deserved relegation uh to be honest and then we have another positive video in austria klagenfurt who uh steadily moved themselves up they got used to to, to league coach Packer doing a uh, although being very old-fashioned doing a really good job and getting the job done they finish uh the regular season in a top six spot and at that moment the season was done they were not a big factor uh in the playoff but they already had had had, had achieved the season goal with not getting relegated Okay, moving over to Germany. Uh, the German Bundesliga season was not one of high excitement, but of high drama because the two big players in Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund both had seasons where overall the dissatisfaction was really, really high. Then uh, Leipzig was not good this season, although everyone expected them after the second place finish last season to really start through, but it just was not going to happen. Um, but they still salvaged the um, uh, Champions League spot. Um, to me, the season was characterized by smaller, I, I, I want to say, uh, fan-run teams really uh, mixing up the league. We had Freiburg and Union Berlin challenging for that fourth spot for a long time, ultimately falling short with uh, Köln uh, really light, light, lighting up the league with a high-energy uh, style of soccer as well. And then, of course, there's the story of Frankfurt. Nowhere in the league. It took to to be honest, although at the halfway point it seemed like they could get a European spot, but winning the Europa League, uh, a huge, 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 huge achievement for them. And so Germany next season has five teams in the Champions League and all in the groups because of Frankfurt winning that, that, that league. And whatever I'm going to say about Frankfurt judging the Bundesliga is only judging the Bundesliga season because overall everyone will say that season is a major success. You won that European trophy and you made it to the Champions League, which you fell just short last season. Um, another positive story was Bayer Leverkusen, a team that was a little bit in no man's land, but uh, really had an exciting season, uh, especially, you know, uh, Musa Diaby, um, Florian Wirtz, really exciting, and Patrick Schick, of course, really exciting team to watch. Uh, if I was a fan, <laughs> as I said, Union Berlin and Freiburg are the greatest stories of the season. Both teams had a shot at a uh, Champions League, but Freiburg, especially for a long time. Uh, they fell off just a little bit short going for the um, uh, German Cup, which they ultimately did not win because Leip because they couldn't score the score goals and then Leipzig turned to turn around and won on a penalty shootout. Köln back in Europe. Um, Got to see uh, if last time they were, this meant relegation. I really hope this is not, not the case because it's such a huge club, Köln, and there will be fans. Whoever will play Köln, there will be fans. The same thing go as for Frankfurt. On the bottom, we have Bielefeld and Fürth, probably the two teams that, yeah, with the exception of maybe Wolfsburg, uh, and, uh, no, no, Wolfsburg, Bochum and Augsburg, you, you would say those are two teams that you would expect getting relegated. Fun fun enough, they're replaced by the two teams that got relegated last season, uh, with Schalke and Bremen. Schalke actually finished last, last, last season now. They finished first. Schalke and Bremen getting back up and also finally, um, Bielefeld, the blue team goes down. Schalke comes up. Fürth, a green team goes down. Bremen comes up. So the color balance in the Bundesliga remains the same. Um, Let's look at the overall diff difference. I mean, uh, as I said, the big winners, uh, Leverkusen, Union, Freiburg and Köln and Bochum needs to be mentioned with their huge win over Bayern Munich as well. Bochum was expected to go, go down. The day they survived is one of the bigger stories and they, uh, it was not even, a, uh, there, there was not even a scare of them going, going, going down. As for the losers, uh, we have to look at Leipzig, although they, Got, got around with Domenico Tedesco. There was a point where Leipzig was probably the best team in, 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 in the Bundesliga in uh, early, early spring, but then fell off. But Gladbach, Frankfurt, Wolfsburg, the three, uh, Gladbach, really, really rough season. At one point, they were really look, uh, staring at relegation. Uh, a lot of up, up people in the end. Coach uh, Hütter gone. Um, <laughs> coach Rose at Dortmund also gone. So the two, uh, the two coach coaches that caused them this big, uh, shock at the beginning of last season or at the, towards the end of last season. Um, I should say they're both gone and much money wasted. There's a new sport, 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 and correcting club. So all bad. And of course, 
I, I have to mention, I mean, Wolfsburg, a really tough season, but I have to mention, uh, especially Hertha. They almost went down. They just didn't need the playoff to survive. Um, Stuttgart also escaped only on the last day of the season. However, uh, they lost a lot of good players. Uh, if you look at the rating, it is pretty ev ev evident that Wolfsburg, Hertha and Bielefeld are the big losers in terms, ter in terms of rating. Whereas the um, big winners are, of course, uh, the Union Freiburg, Köln and even uh, Mainz. Bochum and Leverkusen, I would say those, 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 are, those are the other teams that really have performed well. Bayern, although you feel a little bit disappointed, but they were just about staying level. Just about staying level. There's not, you know, it was not a, it was not an exceptional season. We'll see. They win 10 in a row and let's see how this will go. Again, let's look at the graphs and here I need to go a little bit faster. As I said, Bayern had a very weird, weird season. It look, looking good and always drops, looking good, always have drops, drops, drops. Uh, here I have to the left now expected points and to the right I have the rating. And you see Bayern more or less staying steady. I mean, they had a high, um, you know, at the beginning of, of the year, we thought that Bayern could be a, a contender for the champ, 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 Champions League. We are all undid that. So that's why also the season for Bayern ended a little bit sour. Um, if we look at Leipzig's curve, you see a clear dip. And then they turned around in the second half of the season, but uh, it was not as straightforward. As I said, uh, around March, they probably were the best team, team, team in the Bundes Bundesliga, but then uh, getting ousted in the uh, Europa League uh, through to Rangers and, and so on, and then went sideways. But it ended in their first ever national title, winning the German Cup, and that is probably why this will be remembered as a good season. Dortmund. Winning a lot, but you see it in the rating, it was a continuous slide. They were always leaking goals um, and expected points very, very steady. Um, they got lucky wins. It was not very a convincing uh, um, team overall. Uh, Wolfsburg, one of the big deals, but you see the dip in the expected points. Uh, they actually started well. It looked like they can confirm the season, then they completely fell off. Uh, and also had two coaching changes uh, there you see in the rating. Wolfsburg went from the fourth best team uh, to be an also ran. Frankfurt, uh, you also see that at the end of the fall season, so just uh, December, it looked like they could challenge for European spots and then went sideways. And it, the focus got onto the Europa League. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen, uh, overall a steady upward trend with a little bit a few valleys in there. But Leverkusen finished out the season strong, so uh, pretty good job on on, on, on them. And uh, they are again back where I think every, every, everyone thinks that they, they belong in, in, in into the top four. Union Berlin, um, one of the biggest surprises of the season. And always under coach Urs Fischer doing an uh, admirable job there, uh, keeping them up in the league. Not only that, but contending for European spots for the second time in a row. They uh, are in Europe and to be honest, I never expected that. When Union Berlin got up, I really thought they will go down again. Very well run club. They are the pride of Berlin at this moment. Gladbach, you see it uh, at halfway point. They were really, really down. Um, it did not improve, but at least it steadied itself. But there was a huge uh, drop in. Uh, the results never really, really, really came. The highlight though was a 5 0 over Bayern Munich in the German Cup. So yeah, Stuttgart, ah, oh, Stuttgart looked for a long time as a certain relegation candidate and they just got out on the last day of the season. And you can see this little upturn. Uh, Stuttgart need to uh, improve their squad if they want to stay further. Uh, local rivals Freiburg is another great story. Uh, it should have ended in the German Cup uh, win, to be honest. Coach Grieke, Christian Streich is one of my favorite persons in uh, the German game. And you see, especially the start of the start of the season, it was really, really well. They kept up, win they kept on winning. Have the new stadium now behind them. It was overall a joy to watch Freiburg. Definitely one of the best stories of the season, together with Union. I think those two are for me the best stories. Hoffenheim. Also, at one point, they were in Champions League contention early January, then uh, somewhere March again, and then it all ended badly, and Coach Hoeneß is gone. So, uh, Hoffenheim, another rebuilding job in, in a way. Mainz, uh, just steady midfield, not much more that I, I can, can say. 
but really, 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 really steady. I think they will not be in relegation trouble, but a challenge for Europe might also be a little bit too much. Augsburg is a team that, like Admira Wacker, I always think they should get relegated, but they're just good enough to not get really into relegation trouble, and that needs that uh, they need to be applauded for. Uh, also, some changes happening there. Hertha, an absolute dumpster fire. This is a huge club. This is an absolutely huge club that should play up there. They already started the season kind of in the lower half with expectations. Uh, at one point, they were relegated. They had then three match points to secure themselves. They threw them all the way. In the last playoff in Hamburg, they came through uh, and they are not getting relegated. Bielefeld looked safe early uh, uh, early this year to the point where I actually really thought uh, I, I, I might get this wonderful Bielefeld jersey, uh, jersey, jersey which is the one that I did not get and end up getting, get, getting and because I kind of saw the signs on, on the wall that they will get relegated and it's exactly what happened. I still love both of those jerseys that they were wearing this season, the home jersey and the pre and so I might as well just get that as well. But you see, at the end, they just didn't have the strength. Köln, last season, they were the Berlin of La Last season, they got with Stefan Baumgart a great coach in there, loads of energy. It was great fun to watch Köln. At the end, maybe... They could have pushed for a Europa League spot. Uh, it felt just a little bit short. It, it, it was too intense of, of, of season, but they had some great wins in there, especially against Gladbach and against Leverkusen, uh, that every current fan will never forget. So uh, overall, a really, really positive season from uh, them. Bochum also super positive season. You see the big spike there in early March. That's the win against Bayern Munich. That was a huge one. That was a huge turnaround for, for them. At that point, everyone knew that Bochum already looked pretty good for a long, long time. But at that point, you knew that Bochum will be safe. And uh, that's a major achievement for a small club like uh, Bochum, to be honest. Um, then we go to Greuther Fürth. Started already on the bottom. And yeah, it was really, really bad for the first half. It's very often that there's one promoted team that's small that really is getting out of class and then find the footing, but it's just too late. It was always going to be Kreuterfurt going down. Um, even they'd never got the turn, the, the, the turn but they never had the squad as well. So yeah, I went through Germany also. Almost the same time as with Austria, but you know, with more teams, you got to do it a little bit quicker. So let me know what you thought about the seasons in these two countries. Um, I think it uh, over, overall... Maybe not the most exciting uh, season, but at least in Germany, we had some really feel-good stories again with Union Berlin and Freiburg and for me, a little bit current there in, in Israel. And of course, the best one, of course, with and, and, and Frankfurt winning the Europa League and making it all the way in the Champions League. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!